Hello everyone, welcome to the Uncensored Match Build-Up Show. I'm Chris Pajak, I'm joined by Chloe Bloxham and the fantabulous Mr. Dan Club over at the board. Uh, we're here to preview Liverpool's epic comeback against <laughs> Atalanta in the Europa League to be the only English side left in Europe by the end of tonight, hopefully. Um, or the demise of Liverpool Football Club in the Europa League at the hands of Atalanta over in Bergamo tonight. Um, Chloe, how are we feeling? Is it bad to say that I'm actually excited? Like, is it? Because no, I am excited. I don't know why. I just need Liverpool to get 1-0 at half-time. We can't concede, I know that much. But just get me to 1-0 at half-time and I'll back the Reds. I really will to be able to make this comeback. Liverpool have to start putting their chances away. Um, but Liverpool lo love two-legged ties under Jürgen Klopp and I'm hoping that there's one more miracle for us in, in Europe under him. Yeah, same, mate, honestly. Obviously, Dan, um, you're over at the ball, mate. Um... It's a little bit more of a tough ask away from home. Just a little bit, yeah. Um, it is without a shadow of a doubt. We've it's been a roller coaster ride under Jurgen Klopp, and there's been many a miracle along the way. A lot of them in Europe, obviously, have come at Anfield because that gives us that twelfth man. It gives us that that fear factor under the light at Anfield. This is just a different beast altogether. So it is a lot tougher going away from home. There's no two ways about that. We have given ourselves the proverbial mountain to climb. However, having said that, unbridled optimist that I am, I am optimistic. I am excited, like Chloe. I think if we do start the game well if we do get on the front foot and most importantly get that early goal and manage to keep the back door shut who knows some nerves some jitters on the back side. door we have a back door okay we'll really let's shut it it's, not, it's mainly on the hinge and it's a <laughs> poor as piss hinge as well I've got to say but um, yeah listen Liverpool we've been unrecognisable of late haven't we let's be honest especially in these past two three weeks you could stretch it as far as I want to see a performance I want to see a Liverpool side that I can get bought into I want to see something more akin to what we used to see in from this Liverpool side under Jurgen Klopp and I think if we can produce anything like that tonight the job can be done by us it is there for us it sounds silly because we're 3-0 down and Atlanta were boss last week at Anfield but this is Liverpool we've got firepower we've got world class players across the pitch we can do this yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and do you know who else might think we can do this or at least knows what we need to do? Jürgen Klopp, so let's go to him now. Hi, Jürgen. Um, just, I was just reading back on what some of the players said about the Barcelona game, about what you said before the game. Um, particularly De Dejan Lovren talked about a brilliant speech you made. I'm just wondering if you've got anything in mind tomorrow to... <laughs> Not actually, can you tell me what it is, but you know, have you... Have you Got me thinking about. Yeah, I, I wrote it already. Um, down. Uh, what I remember from that time, you know, I usually don't prepare these kind of things like that, and especially not a day before or four years before or whatever. So, um, uh, if I will, what I will say, the boys, I think about tomorrow. Um, but definitely nothing about these kind of things were in the press conference before. I remember that I said, if we fail, then let's fail in the most beautiful way. And that's exactly how I see it again. But it's, I said it already, we want to win the game. And then if we want to win the game, we should better play good. If we play good, we have a chance to win it. Um, and then we will see. It is exactly like that. But I said after the game as well, directly after the game, everybody in the stadium in Liverpool, the Liverpool supporters, the Bergamo supporters, players, our staff thought, that's it. But since then, it's uh, now a week later. I don't think everybody thinks it's already decided. Um, but you, know, well, we are here, and we can be good. But obviously, we, we can be not so good as well. So let's see what we what we can um, put on a pitch tomorrow. But my my team meeting will not happen in front of the world here in a press conference as will happen there and if we win the players will find a reason to tell the world what i said and if we lose nobody want to hear what i said so um that's it Hey everyone, I've not been panicking trying to find Adrian for the past 30 seconds, not at all. We have a team, this is not it, this is very close to being it. The reason I've left it as this is because this is the side I would have chosen. The one change I need to make from that is this guy, Diogo Jota, the hat-trick hero from last time the Reds played in Bergamo, is not starting. Now I would have started him tonight because I felt like if he had an hour in his legs, give him the hour to get the most from him, hasn't happened. Instead, I need to swap him for a guy I now cannot find. Yeah, left. Just, 
Yeah. There he is, right in front of my face. Look at that. Them two. And I probably do something like that, which is interesting to me, but we'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. But Alison Becker, Trent Alexander Arnold, Ibu Canase, Virgil van Dijk, Andy Robertson, Alexis McAllister back into the six. No Vitaro Endo tonight. Dom Sabozlai, Curtis Jones, bit of a talking point there on social media earlier. Louis Diaz, Cody Gakpo leading the line centrally. Interesting. And Mohamed Salah, which leaves us a bench. There's a lot of them, so bear with me. Keith Keller, Ryan Gravenberch, Ritaro Endo, Joe Gomez, Joel Quanza, Diogo Jota, Jaden Dans, that's nice, Harvey Elliott, Bobby Clark, Darwin Nunes, dropped, Costas Simakas, and Adrian, who I found about five seconds before he came back to me. It's a good side. I like it. He's taking it seriously. How are you feeling now? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. Uh, I was with Dan on the, I'd love to see Jota, um, but also at the same time, you know, I, if he's not got that time in him, uh, then he's a great impact sub that we can bring off the bench. I'm really happy to see Cody Gakpo start, and I think he's been really good and actually a, br a bright spark in Liverpool's last three games when we've actually been a little bit crap. Uh, so I'm excited to see him. Uh, he's not playing with Taro Endo, which shows, look, we can't go all out attack from the beginning, but it very much is the most attacking team that we can put out there. He's backing Curtis Jones, even after a couple of um, poor performances since he came back, which is expected with how long he was out. But yeah, an exciting team, uh, a really strong team, and hopefully it's a team that can score three, four, five goals. Oof. <laughs> Would love it. Let's hope so. Right. We know that they played uh, Hellas Verona on Monday night. We know yeah. they conceded a couple of goals in just a few minutes to draw the game to all. We know that they've not been in great form in Italy at the moment. We know that they played nine of the players that they played in the first leg against us. They only made two changes for that Hellas Verona game. So it means that they actually went quite strong for it. They did withdraw lads on 60 and 70 and stuff like that. But we had an extra day's rest. That was an eight, eight o'clock-ish kickoff, something like that on Monday night, Chloe. Will that have an impact? And could we see tiredness in Atalanta's legs? Potentially, but also you're a footballer, so I'm so sorry. I'm not having this as an excuse. Wow. Um, sorry, you get paid millions to, to kick a football around. Wow. Okay. Job. Um, but also, Sounds on the so... other side of it, um, what I am hoping is, look, they were 2 nil up and conceded two goals, like you mentioned there. If Liverpool get one, uh, maybe just maybe the crowd gets a little bit worried and hopefully they can have a, a, a negative impact on the team, on the players on the pitch. There's not many um, of them. There's, there's not many, um, but, you know, there's enough to create a, a really big atmosphere. Um, so, yeah, look, Liverpool need to go there. They need to get an early goal if possible, but at least take a lead into half-time for me. And then you can just put doubt into Atalanta's mind. Yes, Atalanta beat us 3-0, but they're also facing Liverpool Football Club, and sometimes that can be daunting, just the name. Uh, let's hope that can have an effect as well. Absolutely. Listen, one of the things that I think that I, I was most worried about going into this game, and as the games got closer and closer, I've got more and more confident that we're actually going to progress we need to talk a little bit about last night because uh, last night was a glorious <laughs> evening of football wasn't it Dan yeah. um, I mean I know you watched the full 120 the City game I watched the full 120 the City game what did you watch I watched absolutely I've watched both you watched Mom, both watch all at both. the same time in your face get it in your eyes get it in your ears but Dan there's something about it. My head was telling me I needed them both to go through and my heart was so happy when those penalties were missed. And can I just say, absolute shit houses that Man City are for having your goalkeeper take a penalty. Yeah, and considering some of the players that did, and Rodri was on the list of players not to take a penalty. Kevin De Bruyne got himself out of that particular situation by asking to be taken <laughs> off by it depends. Erling Haaland likewise and Manuel Akanji. So yeah, shit houses is most definitely the word for them, lads. But yeah, I'm with you. For, for weeks now, ever since the draw was made, We've all been saying in, in upstairs, in podcasts and what have you, we want City and Arsenal semi-finals to get more minutes into their respective legs. But then when it actually came around to the games and I sat in front of me telly at home and went, I hate both of these. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't sit here and want them to qualify no matter what it means for Liverpool point of view. So now, especially when you see Arsenal go out last night and you're watching the Man City game unfold, you think, actually, if they go 120 minutes and then were to lose on penalties, which is obviously what happened, psychologically, what impact does that have on them? And they've done the 120 minutes anyway. So... It's actually fallen quite nicely, albeit some would still argue the extra two games into legs might have been more beneficial for the Reds. But listen, watching Man City go out of any competition is just glorious these days because I cannot stand them. So yeah, I was all about last night. 
Yeah, and it wasn't uh, 115 minutes. It was 120 minutes that they had to fight through mm-hmm. before their penalties. Uh, Hawks with a super chat, hoping for a good performance with goals, no matter if we go through. Uh, we are still terrific side, but they need to prove it to themselves to charge into the end of the season, Hawks. Thank you so much for the mm. super chat. Thank this you. is far too generous, uh, but we'll accept it nonetheless. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, it was great seeing Man City go out. It was great seeing Arsenal go out. What would be even better is seeing Liverpool Liverpool progress. Yeah, hundred percent. And look, it's I I felt sick watching those games of football, and that's not even Liverpool that's involved in that. But it was just the thought of um, once Arsenal was losing, and I, I'm sorry, I can't watch a game of football and and have and want a team on Manchester City or Arsenal to win, especially when it comes to Europe, because for me that feels like our competition. If if it's not Liverpool, I don't want an English team to win it at all. And some people can argue with me over that. I'm not asked. Um, I spe- especially don't want a team to win it who've got 115 charges under the name um, so yeah I was absolutely made up when they went out on penalties specifically as well I was made up that Bernardo Silva missed the penalty uh, I was uh, on the, the other side of that I was made up that Edison scored a penalty and it meant absolutely not and because the fact that Edison is your fifth penalty take mm. is a bit mad um, but yeah like you said it just gave me a, a little bit of a boost um, I, I thought and uh, people can correct me if they're wrong but I I think Manchester City will win the Premier League, so I couldn't have them also winning the the Champions League. And if Arsenal win in there, they are very much they were going to walk it. Um, so yeah, it gave me a bounce. Liverpool are most important now for us. We've got to try and get through, and we've got to give everything. Uh, but I'm taking all the positivity that I can, and hopefully the, that game really does impact and it makes them dwell on it because you get past Real Madrid and there was absolutely no one stopping you there. Mm. No, absolutely right. Back onto Liverpool then. Uh, the sides obviously out. We've gone through it already. For anyone who's just joined us, I know a few people are asking. Uh, Dan will go through it now. And Dan really want to get into the Gakpo starting centre forward and why you think he's chosen Gakpo tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So team news-wise, first and foremost, Alison Becker back in goal. It's great to see him back. Came back at the weekend. Um, unfortunately, to pick the ball out of his net, uh, but not much you could do about that one. So really just positive having him. Trent Alexander-Arnold starting again as well. Another positive. Ibu Canate, a bit of a 50-50 choice for me over him and Joel Kwan. So he's chosen Canate. I think the best version of Ibu gets into most sides in the world, to be honest with you. So not too upset with that one. Virgil van Dijk, obviously. Andy Robertson's been in brilliant form of late, so made up to see him continue at left-back. And also, that's quite an attacking choice there. We just mentioned Jürgen needs to throw a lot at this. I think both his full-backs have indicated he very much is doing that because could have easily gone Joe Gomez, one of them, has chosen not to. The midfield is also a continuation on that theme of very attack-minded midfield. Quite fluid. Obviously, McAllister is in brilliant, more of advanced, but I think he's picked him over Otaro Endo to add that more creativity in there, which is great. So, McAllister, Curtis Jones, Dom Zabozlai, and a front three. Interesting one. Mohamed Salah, of course, Mohamed Salah. We need the best version of Mohamed Salah as well, by the way, tonight. He needs to spark into life for us if we're going to have a chance of progressing here. Cody Gakpo Central, Louis Diaz from the left. Now, where this is interesting for me, I have no qualms whatsoever with Cody Gakpo starting this game. Chloe said it a moment ago. He's been the one in two pretty substandard performances from Liverpool who's actually shown like he's in a little bit of form and he's quite confident, which is... Far removed from what was the case a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, it was Vols averse. It was Liverpool playing really well, but Cody Gakpo wasn't. Cody Gakpo was like, how do you solve that problem? Now it's just flip. It's completely different. Gakpo's been outstanding the past couple of games. The rest haven't around him. However, a lot of what he's done well has come from the left. So it's interesting that he started him tonight and he's starting him centrally. Now, listen, that could interchange a little bit it could be a little bit fluid but not so much with Diaz I think if it was Gakpo and Nunes you'd see them swap over quite a lot but with those two not so much so it's an interesting one it's an interesting balance interesting dynamic I'm worried with Gakpo starting centrally and I really like Cody Gakpo I've just said that he's playing really well so I like the fact he's starting the game I'm a little bit fearful that he won't have the same impact and if he does have a poor performance that immediately the conversation is going to go, well, he's just, he's not it then, is he? And it, it gets shut down so quickly. So it is a slight concern for me. However, having said that, Darwin Nunes isn't in great form either. But my preference would have been give Diaz a rest, start Gakpo and Nunes. One of the things that I think about actually is, is why. And I think back to last week um, and obviously the way that they sort of man to man go against us, Chloe. And I think now I'm looking at it thinking Trent Alexander Arnold's probably likely to go into the middle of the park. I would have thought if you'd have played a flying fullback, get, maybe get Gakpo in the nine, you can drop him deep, get your four men in the middle of the park. But what could be really interesting here is if they go man to man across the um, pitch with us, 
Gakpo getting out of those central areas will actually naturally take a man-to-man centre-back out of the way and then it's about yeah. people getting into that space. And, and Diaz loves that, you know, Kevin is running inside and, and running off the, the, the central defender, getting in between the centre-back and the left-back. Um, and if Cody Gakpo can just drag one of those those defenders in deep, um, then it leaves loads of space for our wingers to really get in behind. And also, Salah at times is being... Um, you can imagine Sobosla is going to be the one over... Lap and Salah on the outside, which means Salah can also make those diagonal runs in between the, the right back and the centre half. What I will say is, is Liverpool struggled to get in between the lines. They struggled to keep hold of the ball against Atalanta. We were turning it over in dangerous positions. Cody Gakpo is potentially the best at that, at keeping the ball, at protecting it. And he was the best at that within the first 15, 20 minutes when Liverpool were actually fairly OK um, in the first game. So, yeah, look, that hopefully will be um, a... a a positive more than a negative and hopefully he can drag players out and, and we can also look Soberslay and Curtis Jones Curtis Jones is so good at finding the space and going and standing in it if maybe he can you know overlap as Cody Gakpo drops deep into maybe an eight yeah, and then we've got a player vertical runs that exactly. we used to see all the time um, but yeah it's going to be hopefully it's going to be exciting Um and hopefully Liverpool need to get closer to Atalanta when we don't have the ball. We need to be not as careless. And look, we were horrific. Atalanta were brilliant, don't get me wrong, but Liverpool played a massive part in being 3-0 down already in this leg. We need to show up tonight. Absolutely. You got a super chat from Sean Parks. Thank you so much. Just says, Trent, quick corner, two points oh coming. And that mm. would be lovely is it, to see. Is it birthday today? It is, yeah. It is, yeah. It is. And um, did you oh, see Man City tried to do the, the same corner that they scored against us last night, actually? in their game and it didn't work out it was nice to see yeah Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one really great comment I've got here Dan I'm going to aim this one at you mate Nigel Smith pace is useless against the low block Gakpo is better technically that could really be the case yeah absolutely it could yeah and your point on him sort of dropping deep and dragging men out is is very sort of salient and very worth making because he is the best at that in terms of the way he goes about his business when he does lead the line for Liverpool he drops he drops in so so well he was Bobby Firmino 2.0 he was was anointed when he first arrived. I think we all saw a similar sort of hallmarks and attributes in him, but he hasn't really managed to kick on from there. A lot of that is down to being played in different positions all the time, and that's kind of a little bit what's happened tonight, but there's no two ways about it. If Gakpo plays in the way he can and the way he's been playing in recent games and defenders go with him and he does attract attention, he does bring defenders out of position to free up room for the likes of Salah, Diaz, even Sir Bosley and Curtis Jones, then he's got a big, big role to play here tonight and I think you're right. I think Atalanta going man for man, he definitely suits it in the way he goes about his business is perfectly suited to Liverpool trying to unlock this Atalanta side. So I'm all for it. I really like this selection. I just want to see Cody Gakpo play the role in the way he knows he can. He hasn't done it much this season. That's why I'm slightly concerned because I think his best form of late has come from the left-hand side. It was almost as if we completely scrapped the whole let's mess around with Gakpo thing. He was a left winger for PSV. Let's just get him back out there and get him back into form. Slight change tonight, but again, I come back to it. He's playing really well. His confidence feels like it's up. So if he can get the best out of his own performance, he can definitely, definitely make us tick tonight and be a big part as to why Liverpool go about winning this game because... It is a little bit, and I thought this when we mess around with the team before, it's a little bit of a throwback Klopp side in so much as you've got Trent and Robertson obviously as your full-backs, very attack-minded. But that Firmino-esque number nine and potentially a Salah, Mane, Stroke, Diaz, winger feels like a bit of a, a bit of a hark back to what we used to be really good at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dan, um, while you're at the board, uh, before we wrap it up, got two things that I still want to do, of course. Cool. But while you're at the board, when it inevitably becomes 4-2-4, yeah. uh, what's the options for us here tonight? It's a uh, difficult one, that. It's probably something like Gapper might have to drop a little bit deeper, maybe, and become a bit of That's a ten. three. In yeah. the middle, yeah, okay. but I don't, I don't see us going for that. I think the only way we do it is a but gap when though. we inevitably go to four two four and have four strikers back. on the pitch. Dan, what I will say, come I'm on, not... we're going four two four at some point. He can change Jota, that. Jota Nunes, he can change. Oh, Nunes comes on. Nunes comes on for that one. Without a shadow of a doubt. Humor and me here, please, Dan. The in, the when in. we go to four up top, what does it look like? Diaz, Jota, <laughs> Nunes, Salah. There we go, Chloe. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think much. Diaz stays. I'm not sure Diaz stays. Something like that. And then, oh, good Lord. And then you want Diaz over there. <laughs> I do, yeah. My word. Look at that. It's what? compact. It's compact. What I will say on Jota, we, I said about right the top of the show, well, if he's got an hour in him, get the hour out of the way first and try and get ahead of the game. But 
if there's an inclination that this could go to extra time, you might need the second hour from him, potentially, and get the 120 out of him. So it's an interesting one. It's a really hard balance to strike. If we do end up with something like that, then my word. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the final thing before we go, uh, I'm going to spring it on Chloe Bloxham right now. Chloe, you're in there, in the dressing room, giving the team tour to the lads. What are you going to say to them? <sighs> what am I going to say? First of all, attack it. Give it absolutely everything. This is exactly what you've worked for. This is what you've put your all your hours in for. Um, it's t down to the business end of the season. It's uh, three goals, but they're good enough. He's are good enough to get that back. We have the chances. We just need to put them away. If I'm Jürgen Klopp and put myself, it's my last season. I've got a handful of games Listen, left. Notice. Yeah, yeah. I've got hand <laughs> a handful of games here left with us. Um, after this, who the hell knows what happens at Liverpool Football Club? Like we're all hoping for the best, and it could be even better. But ultimately. You won't have an as fun manager as Jürgen Klopp. You're not going to get anyone like him. So go out there, fight for the badge, give everything for the badge, give everything for the fans that have travelled there, who've had to have 24 credits to get there. Um, and also give everything for Jürgen Klopp, give everything to win and write your name in history of Liverpool Football Club. Yeah, I'm, I, I just tell them to grab him by the balls and go <laughs> for it. But that was much better, Chloe. Thank you so much. Dan, score prediction for tonight. Wow. Um, oh, go on then. 4-1 Liverpool, which means extra time. Yeah. Which means Liverpool progress in extra time thanks to a Jogo Jota goal. 5-1 Love it. Overall. Love it. Chloe? Oh, my God. 3-0, <laughs> extra time. We make it 4-0. Okay. What I actually think is going to happen is that you're both wrong and that we're going to win 5 0 and go through 5 3 on aggregate in 90 in your face, Atalanta. Uh, we'll be back for the watch long. Come and join us where you'll get to see Liverpool beat Atalanta 5 goals to nil. If it doesn't happen, I'm sorry. Uh, if it does happen, you hit it first. Up the fucking Reds, Tara. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.